Hey everyone, Scott Moore here, and along with my son Daniel, we have put together some free training to share with you. Five common pickleball mistakes you can repair right away that may be stopping you from a 40 plus rating and definitely stopping you from having more fun. When we started back in 2014, Daniel and I both won singles gold medals the first time we played nationals but lost 11-8 in the third to a couple guys named Wes and Enrique in doubles who truly understood the game of doubles while we were basically playing singles on a doubles court. So in 2015, we split up, began to seriously study the game of doubles, played numerous tournaments with various partners, and won almost every tournament we played, ending up as the co-players of the year and developing a systematic approach to the game. We've also turned these 10 principles into a paid online video course called the Pickleball Masterclass. Even if you can't join us for a live clinic, you can get a lifetime access to the same principles from the comfort of your home on any device with an internet connection. We'll tell you a little more about that at the end of this training. Now that you know a little more about us, let's jump into the five most common mistakes that we see. Mistake number one is hitting the ball too hard. This happens because a lot of pickleball players come from other racket sports where you're trying to hit more winners. But in pickleball, we have the non-volley zone, so it's much more a game of finesse and strategy than other racket sports. So the problem with hitting too high is your margin of error becomes very low, especially when the ball is low. That means I gotta hit it up above the net, which oftentimes won't happen. And I also gotta get it through his strike zone and keep it in play. Very difficult to, to handle all that at once. So if we can avoid having to hit it so hard and hit it arcing down at his feet, we're gonna be much better off. Because if I get down here and I try to hit it hard, often it'll go into the net or it'll go into his strike zone where he will blast it. Much better shot is when I, the ball comes low to me is to hit it back at his feet so that he then has to hit up on it. We always wanna keep our opponents hitting up on the ball whenever possible so try to avoid that mistake of hitting it too hard, especially when it is below your knees. So mistake number two is gonna be backing up off the kitchen line. Now, this is what we call a positional mistake and it often results in you losing the point or at least making it a lot more difficult for you to win the point. So a lot of people, they hit the third shot drop, they come all the way up to the non-volley zone line and they're ready, they play from here, but then they start scooting back as the point goes on. This could be out of habit, or maybe you get pushed back once, or you don't like to volley. And so slowly they start scooting back and scooting back. And sometimes that's okay to take a step back, but you always wanna come back up to the non-volley zone line or the kitchen line and play from here. Sometimes um, a ball that comes up to you high here, it would be attackable here, but because you're all the way back here, now it's coming down to your feet. So a ball down here, I might be able to slam it from up there. Now I have to lift it up. If I'm all the way up here, I'm ready for it, and I can win the point from here. It also makes it much harder for me to get the ball back to my opponent's feet. I lift it up too high sometimes when I'm back here, whereas if I'm up here, I can hit a nice soft dink, get it back into their non-volley zone line. It also takes pressure away from them by extending their non-volley zone line. I've, I've effectively created a 10-foot kitchen here. He doesn't have to hit a perfect dink anymore to get it down to my feet. So for all those reasons, we wanna stay up here and play from the kitchen line as much as possible and not automatically scoot back. So mistake number three is just not getting into the right position. A lot of times we hit a drop shot and we just stand and admire it and we don't get in, leaving our feet exposed. Whenever we hit a successful shot from the middle of the court or back to the baseline, we wanna move forward as quickly as we can until our opponent hits the ball. Ideally, all the way to the kitchen line but we don't wanna just stand there and admire the shot, giving him a chance to hit at our feet. We always move forward quickly and until the ball is hit, and then we try to play as much as possible from the non-volley zone. So getting in proper position is a big mistake that we see. It also happens on dinks. If I'm taken out wide on a dink, for example, I dink here, 
and I stay out here, it leaves the, the middle open. A lot of people will just admire their dink instead of getting out there and not cover the middle. We always want to cover the middle. So proper positioning, getting in the right position after you hit the right shot, getting in the right spot is what you want to do in pickleball. Don't stand and admire it. Get to the right spot. Okay, so mistake number four is going to be going for the winner too early and not playing with enough margin for error. So pickleball is a game of attrition and we, we really want to keep the ball in play longer than our opponents. That's how we win most pickleball rallies and that's the most consistent way to win. So if we're taking too much risk by trying to hit winners from too low, we're going for the sideline too close to the net, those are all things that are, that are putting the risk on us and taking it away from our opponents. So we, we don't want to do that. If the ball's too low, instead of trying to go for a winner from here, put it back into play and, and wait for your opponent to make the mistake instead of you. So it's going to look like this. I just want to get it back. If we try to hit a winner from this position, that's very risky. Same thing on the sideline. If I'm trying to hit right along the sideline, a lot of those I'm going to miss out. A better shot is to hit it down the middle, wait for a better ball, and then you hit hard on the better shot. So with everything, pickleball is a game of attrition. You don't want to be the first one to make the mistake, so make sure you're not hitting a risky shot by trying to win the point too early. Wait for a better shot from up here, then you're a much more consistent, high percentage pickleball player. Mistake number five is going to be taking the paddle too far back and therefore hitting the ball behind your body. So most of us know ready position for your paddle needs to be somewhere in front of your body. This is for dinking, for volleys, really for any shot in pickleball. We want to play out in front of us. And when the ball's going slow in a dink or a volley exchange, most people do a pretty good job of keeping that paddle way out in front of them. The problem is when the ball starts going faster and faster, we start swinging more and more wild and the ball gets behind your body and then the ball pops up, they get to hit a smash and that's it. Instead, what we wanna do is as the ball gets going faster and faster, we actually wanna keep the paddle even more in front of us. We have less time to react and so we don't have time to be swinging wildly like this. We want to keep it as compact and as simple as possible. And this does a few things. First, because you're hitting from a higher point, you actually get to hit down on the ball. That goes down to your opponent's feet. Now they have to hit up and you most likely get a high ball that you get to put away. The other thing is that it's taking time away from them. So if I'm hitting here, they have a half a second less than if I'm hitting back here, that can be enough time to put pressure on them and force an error. And then the last thing is that uh, it takes away your own chicken wing. So if you're getting caught back here like this a lot, especially on the forehand side, instead of this, try to keep the paddle out in front of you. A ball that's coming to your chicken wing, you can cut off mostly by taking it as a backhand and then you don't have to worry about it. So let's demonstrate that a little bit. I'm going to try to keep it way out in front of me. And then I get to hit down on the ball. That's what we want to do, especially in a rapid fire volley exchange. Try to form that habit by hitting slow first and then slowly speeding up so that at every level and at every speed, you can keep that paddle way out in front of you instead of taking it back here. I want to ask you a question. Are you ready to take your pickleball game to the next level, making pickleball even more fun? Do you want to do it the right way and see results the very next time you step on the pickleball court? If so, I want to introduce you to the Pickleball Masterclass. It's the only comprehensive online pickleball course that'll help you achieve a 4.0 rating or higher, attract better players, better partners, and have more fun in a record time. The Pickleball Masterclass is all about helping you become the best player you can be without losing the fun side of the game. It's all about giving you the ability to compete against higher skilled players without feeling uncomfortable or inferior on the court. It's all about helping you reduce the frustration that comes along with unforced errors so that you can have fun and compete at a higher level. 
Inside the Pickleball Masterclass, we have 35 videos broken up into eight modules. The serve, the return, the third shot, fourth shot, the dink, lob, the volley, and the reset. We break down each of the core aspects of the game and attach a principle so that the skill that is taken away takes all the guesswork out of the game for you. And you have a systematic approach to the game that you can build a solid foundation upon. So who's this course for? If you love the game of pickleball, you're tired of making too many unforced errors, you wanna play at a higher level and have more fun, this course is for you. While in-person training is great, we believe our online course gives you longer lasting results because you get unlimited access. You can watch a training video, practice the concept, watch it again, then move on to the next concept at your own pace as many times as you need. And because we wanna make this incredibly affordable for as many people as we can, we're gonna be selling the course for just under $300. But as I mentioned, if you stick around to the end of this video, we're offering an additional discount of $100, so you can join right now for only $197. There you have it, $197 for unlimited access for everyone in your household. Just click the button below this video and it'll take you to our checkout page where the discounted price is already factored in. When you check out, you'll have instant access to all the training inside the Pickleball Masterclass, the championship drills, one day clinic, and the paddle grip series. We already have 900 students that have joined the Pickleball Masterclass and are seeing the growth they were looking for in their pickleball games. Check out what Rick has to say about our training. I'm an avid pickleball player, so I'm always looking for the next way to improve my skill level so that I can play better, beat my friends a little bit more often, and have more fun. So when I came across the opportunity to purchase Scott Moore's Pickleball Masterclass online video series, I didn't have to think twice. Most of you know Scott to be the best senior player in the history of the game, but in addition to being a fantastic player, he and his son Daniel are also outstanding teachers. All the lessons they provide are very clear, concise, easy to understand, and very easy to transfer out onto the court for either practice or gameplay. I encourage any of you guys that are students of the game that want to get better, check out Scott's Pickleball Masterclass series. And that's our ultimate goal with the Pickleball Masterclass, to give you a simple framework that takes the guesswork out of the game so that you can focus on growing as a player advancing your level and making the game much more fun. And you now have two choices. You can either continue going out there every day and hoping that you will improve by playing with the same old people and doing the same old things, or you can take the fast track to pickleball improvement by learning some shortcuts and real techniques that we have learned over the years, improve strategy and drills from a couple of professional instructors who can quickly give you the tools to become the best pickleball players you can ever be. So that's it for our top five pickleball mistakes that you can repair overnight. We hope this video has given you some great insight into how to take your game to the next level. And even if you decide not to purchase the course, hopefully it's a good start where you know where to focus your time and attention to become a better pickleball player. So get out there and practice what you've learned. And for those of you that have joined today, we really look forward to seeing you inside the course and sharing our proven pickleball principles and strategies. That's it for our free training. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in and hopefully we'll see you in the pickleball court somewhere. Scott Moore's class was one of the most, one of the strongest pickleball classes that I've taken. I feel like my game is definitely improving and I cannot wait for another class to take with Scott. Hello friends, my name is Bill and I wake up every morning trying to figure out how I can get better at the game of pickleball. Pickleball Masters class has certainly helped me do that. The really nice thing about Pickleball Masters class is that they give you instruction, then demonstration. They'll give you even drills to do or a game to play. Uh, I can refer to it anytime I'd like to which is a big benefit if I want to work on something specific. I'll just watch the video, go to the courts, and work on it. So uh, I would highly recommend Pickleball Masters class.